Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to introduce you guys to Sysmon for Linux. And yes, you did hear that correctly. Sysmon has now been rolled out for the Linux operating system. So we previously covered Sysmon for Windows, which really turns our Windows event logs on steroids, basically. <laughs> um, gives us a much more wealth of information into what's going on on our Windows boxes. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'll link it in the top right corner for you to check out and get a little bit of understanding of why Sysmon for Linux is really kind of such a big thing. So there are some key benefits here. So we are able to collect Sysmon events similar to what we were collecting on our Windows boxes. And this all happens within real time. So unlike something like OS Query, where we are running jobs on a set time frame, this happens in real time. So we're able to, for example, log network connections in real time. And we're going to take advantage of eBPF, which runs at a very low level and is actually able to access kernel space. And that's how we are enabled to view these events within real time. And since we are at a very low level, it really kind of opens the door into the type of events that we can actually log. And so here's a list of the types of events that are currently made available to us. So we have our process creations, network connections, process terminations, raw access reads, process access, file creations, and file deletions. The one thing that we are still lacking on, and Sysmon for Linux is new, so it is continually being uh, developed on by the community. So unfortunately, what I would like to see here are DNS queries. Unfortunately, it's not made available yet. So hopefully in the near future, that will be an event that we can add to our Sysmon collection. And so there are a few requirements for this install. Uh, of course, you need a Linux-based operating system. We will need to compile eBPF, and then we will also need a Sysmon config file. So similar to how we install Sysmon on a Windows box, we will supply a config file, which will tell the Sysmon service what events to collect. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump onto a box and get this rolling. So I will also provide a link to their GitHub in the description below where they describe the project, some installation steps. You can see where we'll need to be compiling EBB, EBPF. So there are some dependencies that we will need to install. Uh, we won't have to build from source. There are packages compiled. So if we go to the installation instructions here, you'll link to the install sysmon readme and depending on the operating system that of your choice, uh, the commands are listed out here, uh, which is nice. So you can easily follow along. You can see like CentOS as an RPM. And for this tutorial, I'm actually deploying it on a Ubuntu 20.0.4. Uh, and I have already, and I've already within our GitHub here, parse these commands out for you guys and as well as put together a config.xml file. And this file I actually grabbed from, and I'll link to this guy's blog as well, but he has already put together a config.xml file that we use to tell Sysmon to grab the particular events, right? So you can see our descriptions here and referring back to the type of events that we collect, you see all those here. But I've already parsed that out for you guys, and I'll include a link to the to the GitHub here down below so you guys can follow along if you would like. So I'm first gonna throw this out to the side, and then let me bring this guy over, and I will go ahead and zoom in quite a bit here. It's just a little easier to read. All right, so let's go ahead and go into it. So we're first going to install and compile uh, some dependencies here. So, and again, you should just have to copy and paste. Again, the, if you are following along, this is on an Ubuntu box. So the installations for some of the various Linux distributions are different, but if you follow with along with the the install readme here, uh, that should get you up and running pretty pretty easily. And I'll go ahead and paste that in. Then I'll run an apt update. And now let's install our dependencies. 
So go ahead and paste that there. And a lot of these dependencies are requirements for the eBPF, which Sysmon is using under the hood to, to pick up on network connections, process creations, and things like that. This probably will take a little bit to install, so you just need to be a little patient, but that will finish here. And all right, so now that those dependencies are installed, I'm gonna go ahead and cd into my op directory here, and I'm going to copy our wgit command to grab a package from Microsoft. We will then go ahead and install that package here. And we will run an app git update. And then finally, we will be able to install Sysmon for Linux. Well, and all right, so I got that copied. And now let's install Sysmon for Linux. So I'll ask if I want to continue. We'll say yes. Now that we have the Sysmon package, we need to actually install. We need to tell Sysmon what config.xml file we want to use. So let's go ahead and open up our a. I'm just going to call this config.xml. You can name this whatever you want. And I will go ahead and copy and paste this block in here. I will save that out. Now I will run a very similar to command to what you guys have seen in the past. So we'll say Sysmon and we'll say accept. Eula i and then we will point to our config.xml file. And so our config file has been validated. It is now creating a service for us. And it is now creating a service for us that should be running as sysmon. So if we do system ctl status sysmon, we see that our sysmon service is now running. And we can already actually see some events start to pop through. So Go ahead and expand this out. And so now where are our logs being written to? Well, they are actually being written to our var log syslog file on Ubuntu boxes. Uh, CentOS probably outputs it to its var log messages file, but, um, but I'm not totally sure. I haven't actually installed it on a CentOS box yet. So if one of you guys are following along, installing on a CentOS box, just if you could comment of uh, where those are being outputted to, that would be appreciated. Uh, but here we can actually see our Sysmon for Linux events start to come through. Uh, and they are not very pretty to read, right? So they're coming in as a XML format. And if we like copy one of these blocks here and I'll go to just a XML formatter here and I'll just replace that and select format. XML, you can see what the log actually looks like coming coming in here. You can actually kind of prettyfy the XML uh, instead of this the single line XML that Sysmod for Linux is outputting to. We can kind of parse through the make it a little more easier on the eyes. Uh, but let's actually, and you can see when I log in here, I just popped off a ton of events. Uh, let's see if we let me just create a file. So I'll say opt, I'll say Malware, let me actually grep for malware. And let me just open a file called malware.txt. And you can see I've just popped off some alerts. And here we can actually see that nano was used to open the malware.txt. If I just enter in, I'll just say, please subscribe and save that off we see that our file has been created. So I used nano to open the file and I gave it a file name of op.malware.txt. So we're able to see file creations. Uh, if I do the same to delete the file, and these are all happening in real time, right? So I don't need to wait for a scan to run every hour or wait for my box to be told to collect these events. These happen in real time, which is really nice. Uh, so here I've removed the file and here I've used RM and we removed malware.txt. Now let's actually see some network connections. So I'll use our friendly, uh, I'll just use our friendly ICAR file here. And let me change our graph and I just won't, I'll grab for like destination that should be associated with 
I'm gonna say destination IP actually. So I'll say destination IP and now let's run a wget out to our out to this icar file here and let's see what events pop through. So I'll go ahead and copy that address and wget. And now we can see that now a network connection was made out to this IPv6 address. Which if we look at our event here, so here we see our wget. We see the user that kicked it off, which is root, which is uh, the user that I am right now. We then see the protocol. So we're using TCP to go out and grab from this destination IP. Right? And this is an IPv6. So if we correspond that to what we see within our terminal off to the side here, let me zoom that in a little bit. So if we see off to the, we see what an IPv6 address we connected to to grab this icar.com file, we see that that matches up exactly to what we see within, within our Sysmon for Linux. Right, and then we should have also gotten a file creation for the icar. So if I say, so if I say less, and let me grab for icar. So we're getting some command line arguments coming through, which is really awesome. We see the directory. So we're getting a, a ton of metadata into what's going on on the box. So if we even grab this and go to our XML parser here, Let's see, let's prettify this a little bit and actually see the alert, right? So here we're getting, so we see that our wget binary was called. We get our command line argument, which is awesome. So we can see exactly what was going on on the box. And we get uh, some metadata in terms of the op directory is where this command was ran in, uh, the user that ran the command and really gives us a wealth of information into what exactly is happening on our box at any given time. However, the only caveat is, unfortunately, they don't support a JSON type of output yet. I know that is a feature request that has been asked, so hopefully it's in the works. And this, of course, is very hard to read, and our Wazoo Manager cannot actually parse through the various fields here by default. But in the next video, I will show you guys how you can build out a decoder that will allow the Wazoo Manager to actually parse through the XML here so that we can actually write them to Elasticsearch and be able to view all of our alerts within Kibana. But I will save that for the next video. So this video, I just wanted to cover introducing you guys to Sysmon for Linux, how to install it, and as well as where those logs are being written, and then kind of going through a few examples in terms of creating a new file or downloading something from the internet and looking at network connections and um, things like that. So yeah, more to come on Linux for Sysmon, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one.